Hello everyone, this is Mike here. I hope the uh, end of year is going swell for everybody. Today I'm actually doing something a bit different and I'm going to uh, show a couple of methods that I know of for creating a kind of a uh, fringe in color or um, I guess a quick kind of hacky chromatic aberration effect where you get like a color on one side. I'll show you. But um, I know two separate methods right now and I'll just go through them quickly. So this is a photograph I took around October and yeah right now what you want to do is you want to make a couple of copies and well, actually, let's just start by making one copy and we uh, double click on the layer I hold down alt by the way uh, I hold down alt and drag this and it just quickly makes a copy it's much easier than dragging this down to that new layer thing and I find that a lot quicker so I go back to layer properties and I see the RGB channels and these, actually, let's just let's just isolate this layer just to make it more apparent what we're doing. So what we want to do is sort of make this into a gel layer, or I guess a kind of multiply layer. And we're separating the colors. So uh, right now we can you know choose whatever channel we want, whatever permutation we want. And this depends on uh, I guess the color that we're aiming for that we want to uh, show the fringe of the color so we got the red channel obviously green blue and don't limit yourself to those three there's always a yellow red and green make yellow in terms of color uh, in terms of light in terms of pigment red and green make brown I think so yeah remember that and we have cyan green and blue and magenta so, <clears throat> let's go with magenta right now, and we'll turn back on this layer. So, well, basically what this is doing is uh, making this into a gel layer of sorts. And what we're going to do is we're going to hold, hold, hold out control and move this a little bit. So, what we do is uh, we literally displace the channel a little bit. And we start to get that kind of color fringe effect that we're looking for. And you'll note that it's leaving behind the green, even though this is uh, magenta. And uh, yeah, it's literally displacing it, so it's actually uh, having that, giving that effect. And you can do this for any any uh, permutation that you want. Remember that uh, it's going to have both sides of it. Or if you move the red, it's going to leave behind the blue and green. You move the uh, yellow, it's going to leave behind the blue. But you'll also notice that okay, if I try doing this with just blue and displace the blue channel, it's <clears throat> it's going to have the yellow leave being left behind but it doesn't look like much of an effect like well you can see you can definitely see the blue here ah what have I done okay you can definitely see the blue here but um, you'll note that it's not as prominent as if we were moving around the red and this is mostly I believe it's because <clears throat> let's look at the uh, photograph itself and it and we'll color pick around so watch the uh, hue <coughs> here where most of it really is around the red and orange area there really isn't any blue so if we have uh, if we're moving the blue channel we're not gonna see that much of an effect uh, so this is a case-by-case case scenario 
So if you have a very blue picture, a very blue photograph, then you'll definitely, I think, I'm pretty sure you'll see a lot more effect on the blue channel as you're moving it around. So, yeah, that's, I believe, is the first, the first method of getting this color fringe effect. Except, <clears throat> you'll note that it makes it a bit blurry. You know, it's you're, you're displacing the colors. It's going to make it a little bit uh, messy looking. Like you know, it's going to get kind of difficult to see what exactly it is. Um, yeah, one thing is don't de definitely don't overdo it. But uh, really, it's up to you uh, in the effect that you want in your image. And let's say I want uh, this area to be in focus. So let's just layer mask it. And there we go. And when you layer mask, it's important to have an extra copy of the whole image. Otherwise, it'll just be going into nothing. But yes, that is the first method. So let's hide that layer. Let's make another couple of layers. Ha! Ah, stop. Anyways, um, yeah, hold down Alt and hold down right click, and then drag the mouse around. You can. This is probably one of my favorite things. Um, <clears throat> changing brush on the fly, size, hardness, up down is hardness, sideways is size, sideways is size, that actually sounds really catchy. Anyways, here's the second method that uh, I use if I, uh, <clears throat> if I want to, um, create a very specific kind of color fringe um, <clears throat> instead of um, being, I guess, stuck in the our red, green, and blue channel, cyan, magenta, yellow, even though that does cover just about every permutation of color. So let's uh, make this into a really, really bright orange instead. So right now I'm going to uh, um, <clears throat> make a new layer above the guinea pig layer and I'll just fill that in with the color that I want and don't worry I'm not going mad I'm going to set that to multiply so similar to what we did with making it into a kind of a gel layer of sorts and I'm going to merge that down with control E and then I will set this to lighten. So what that does is it actually um, makes it so that nothing in this layer will show unless it's brighter than the layer underneath or this layer. And you'll only be able to see it when I actually move it around into these dark areas and it'll just pop up brighter so um, yeah usually usually these color fringe effects come in pairs of sorts so let's do that actually let's do a kind of blue this time it doesn't have to be fully saturated remember these are all just uh, tools we don't have to follow the rules all the time or follow pure colors all the time. And we'll set this to a multiply layer and merge that down. Oh, that looks pretty neat. Oh, yes. Don't forget, lighten. So, what shall we do with this? Let's move this orange one in the direction away from the sun and we'll get that 
kind of orange effect instead. And let's just move this blue one to the upper left. So we get this a very different effect of uh, this kind of color fringe. I actually quite like this. That's not bad. That's that's uh, quite neat. Um, yes. So that's the other method that I use. It's a bit more. Um, I guess you can pinpoint using uh, the second method. You can definitely pinpoint the kind of colors that you want for creating that fringe a lot better. But uh, if you're a technical technical person or you, you are really short on time, then you can definitely do the first uh, the first method. That's a really, really fast way. I'm not going to argue with speed here. And as usual, if you want it to be only affecting specific areas, then you can always mask out where you don't want it to happen. It's a bit more subtle here, but I'm just masking out the places that I want it in focus. And yeah, that's, I think that's about it. So I hope anyone who watches this enjoys this. I hope it's helpful. And I do hope everybody has a, a swell New Year's. Um, this is probably one of the last things that I'll be doing this year. Um, I'll see you next year then. Take it easy, everybody.